Hello everybody, welcome back to um, Lost World. We're now about to start uh, World 2, Desert Ruin. And luckily now, we are joined by the one and only Mike Honus fan who fixed his uh, laptop settings. Welcome, Chris. I wish I fixed them. I'm just giving up. Hi. I, <laughs> and and we are joined by, uh, I would say, the most technically minded member of Brain Scratch Comms, uh, Lewis. Thank you for joining us. Why did I have to get the desert level? <laughs> <laughs> the desert level is always the one that kills my interest on any given Mario game, seriously. Uh, they're always second. Why do they always place the desert world second for? I don't know. Although, to be fair, there isn't much desert in this desert level, for which I am profoundly grateful. Yeah, I would say, like, the desert in Desert Ruin is purely a cosmetic thing, as, uh, you know, of, of anything else. Yeah. That, and one really, really bad pun. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood in that cutscene when, when Eggman pulls out the the shell, why doesn't Zavik just punch him? Uh, You're like, you know, it's like serious. Like, Eggman, sh like, I mean, I, I like the fact that they do treat Eggman like a threat, but I don't buy the fact that these six, you know, powerful things just stand there and let him play that stupid shell. Yeah, he gives them way too many opportunities to get that shell away from them, and they never capitalize ever. Plot convenience, I guess. <laughs> this just isn't that serious of an anime, Gareth. Oh, anime serious, Chris. Anime is life. You know that. I know that. The internet knows that. So, um, because me, uh, Clement and I just kind of made jokes in the last part, we didn't really talk about the gameplay that much. <laughs> and because, And because Lewis, I would say, one thing I love watching uh, Brain Scratch LPs, Lewis, is that, like, when you... Normally, when you play the game, when you when you uh, record the footage, or when it's a game you enjoy, you get so like technical about the gameplay, which is something I love hearing. And because during the uh, Brain Scratch run of Lost World, you hadn't yet played the game, I believe. Now you have. Do you want to? Um, do you and Chris both, because you are much better at explaining gameplay than, than I, want to talk a bit about how this game functions and how kind of piss poor the uh, parkour system is? <laughs> I don't know how you're making this look so much like magic, but it's... I know, right? Chris is a demon. Uh, I could never... How did you do that? <laughs> this is actually my worst playthrough of the game, too, is the worst oh, part. Oh, shut up, Chris! <laughs> it's like, Humble you know, bragging bastard! I, I, can, I can never get the frickin' parkour system to work the way I want it to. Like, there'll be rings along the walls. Like, run along the wall exactly here. I can never do it. Oh, there you go. That's more like how I would play it. See, yeah. yeah. It's because, in all actuality, I'm actually Sonic the Hedgehog, so it just comes naturally to me. <laughs> uh, I, I can get the 2D sections pretty well, but the 3D sections are where I really, really lose it. Ah, um, that's interesting. The, the 2D sections are the ones that feel the jerkiest to me, because, you know, if you keep using the run button all over the place, you're going to accidentally run up everything. <laughs> Is it like I, I wish they'd at least programmed some objects so that you wouldn't all like automatically run up them like the little one foot tall blocks and ice blocks yeah. that you're supposed to break th those kind of things it's like why would you ever want to run up those things no I, I said this in the last part but this is actually this is version 3.0 not the latest version of lost world but wh why do you think they programmed it to begin with to have the uh, wisp music not play through the tv that just seems like a very odd design choice does to it me. that's oh Oh, is that how it was before the patch, you mean? Uh, but before before the latest patch, which included the um, Zelda DLC, the uh, the Wisp themes only ever played through the gamepad, not the TV. So we, which is why whenever you see in this LP or the Brain Scratch one, whenever we go to a Wisp, um, the music cuts out. Yeah, I was wondering about that, because you know I distinctly remember hearing like this doo-doo-doo-doo music playing, yeah. <laughs> uh, playing through my headphones while I was actually playing the game. And to confess, I haven't played past World 3. I, I just don't like the game that much. Like, now that I've played it, I, I can't really get into it. It's like, I, I, I won't hold Sonic Boom up as a good game, as a great game by any standards, but, you know, it, it has a very familiar control scheme and I can get down with that. Sonic Lost World, on the other hand, I don't really like the run button. I don't like the parkour system. It just... Eh. Of course, it doesn't help that I was also going for the Red Rings. <laughs> um, again, like um, something we brought up because obviously we are playing, we are recording this after um, Sonic Boom. But uh, something that Lost World has over Boom that I'll give it is the fact that at least you know I don't, I hate the fact that there's a run button. It should be a walk button. Yeah. But at least, at least 
you can be fast with Sonic. Mm. It's just something you can't really do in Boom outside of the, you know, speed sections, which the less said the better. Yeah. I wanted to go back a bit. Um, when when did the last update for this game come out? Was that in April with the Zelda level? It, yeah, it was whenever the Zelda the DLC was released. I think I think that was the um the last and probably final update that they'll do for this. So it took six months for them to put the Wisp audio through the <laughs> TV as well, basically. Nah. Well, you know, the, <laughs> well, it's weird because the, the, the first there was a few patches. I think one of them was um. So we, we we had we had the Yoshi DLC, the Zelda DLC. What was the third one? What was the like? What did was was the was the was there a patch that just fixed a few things? Uh, yeah, I was. I think it was just rela released around the same time that Brain Scratch and Johnny did their respective <laughs> videos on this. Be oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I, me I remember much complaining from Johnny that a lot of his complaints about the game were fixed like a week after he put up the video. <laughs> yeah. That must have been the one that added the hundred rings equals a wife thing back. Uh, that yeah. and, that oh, and yeah, 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 gyroscope controls. That's oh, yeah. what they did. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lewis, how do you, how do you feel about this level design in general? I know we're mostly through it, but it's really, really flat. Like aside from uh, the overall curve that goes from left to right, it's a very flat level, and that doesn't really scream Sonic to me. As mm -hmm. like we have a spin dash, why don't you give us some actual hills to spin dash jump off of, rather than just having everything be uh, a flat land with an occasional trick ramp? Okay, so we have the exact same views. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This level just really feels like a test level or something. Like, there's no actual level to it. It's just a flat scope and well, also some 2D sections that aren't particularly well, complex. No, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's just very flat stuff. Very bland stuff. Stuff that feels... You know, sometimes I say that Sonic Lost World, now that I've played it, feels like it should have been like some kind of uh, Mario Sonic crossover game. It's simply in the way it's designed and the way it controls. Uh, but, you know, the level structure, even though it's stretched out for speed purposes, tends to feel a lot like a Mario game, even more so than Sonic Colors, and that's an achievement. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't disagree with that, but uh, like one thing, I mean, it is, in some of the levels, it's more of a, just a cosmetic thing, I like the fact that in some of the levels, they do have kind of big, wide open spaces, yeah. which is towards the, um, there were quite a few Sonic games which just like the levels felt more like Crash Bandicoot games because of how compact you are allowed to roam. You know, yeah. Um, I kind of appreciate the open life. I love, you know this this interaction. You know what I um I found out the voice actor for Zomom is lyric. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, man. Apparently, someone. Did, I, I was reading. I, I made. I, I did what Ted doesn't do. I was looking at the comments for the uh, Brain Scratch Boom LP, and <laughs> someone was like, "Lyric Stone Mom." I was like, "That's amazing." <laughs> and I think Clement told us that um, the voice. I think it's Patrick something. I apologize. I, I, I don't know his name offhand, but Stone Mom's voice actor also did Wreck It Ralph for All Stars Racing Transformed. Yeah, I think his last name's Sates. S e i t z. That's yeah, Patrick Sates. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I called attention to this in the Brain Scratch playthrough, but it bears repeating. The Beehive level is like a slide level, and that is just so Mario Galaxy. <laughs> it's like there, there was a level pretty much exactly like this in Galaxy 2, except instead of running, you were sliding down a pipe. That's right, yeah, the big tree level. Yeah. Well, to, to be fair, this kind of stuff, it's been in games since, like, SA. Well, like, this is just kind of, like, to me, I view it more of a extended version of running down the building in Speed Highway. Yeah. Like, the, the going down section. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's hard to actually realize this until you look at the background, but we are running straight down, which is why we can't stop. But uh, it, it's just, you know, the similarity in this case is incredibly glaring because Lost World already strongly resembles Mario Galaxy. And, you know, I never even thought for a moment that, that Sonic Colors uh, resembled Mario Galaxy. Because, you know, the only real similarity was it's in space. It's in space, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, this game, the spherical planets, the, the distinctly Mario level themes. And then you have something like this, smack in the, at the beginning of it. Mm. Of course people are going to well, make it, a comparison. It's a rumor, and, and I said... I said I'd, I'd find this out months ago, but I never did. There was a rumor that, um, because, you know, this was the first one in the, ex in the um, Nintendo's exclusive deal, 
there was a rumor that you know N Nintendo um, workers helped like make this game. Which, if if it, if it, that's true, they clearly, you know, Nintendo clearly gave Sega their C team. If this was what you know, Nintendo employees <laughs> made. The more I look back on our failed recording of this game, and that came up like three different times, the more I think that was just some weird forum post that just for some reason got spread around. Because I'm, I don't call anything ever being said to support that being an actual. Yeah, yeah I haven't said. It may have been like, Stadium. We're taking inspiration from Mario, and that got mistranslated into Nintendo's working with us. I don't know. Because yeah, I think um, who was it? It's been pointed out a lot that but the the the, uh, the level themes and and their progression is exactly like in most Mario games. You know, mm -hmm. like you know, like grass, um, uh, deserts, and you know, you know, ice levels full from what have you. And even that's not inherently bad. I think it's just the game's just not that interesting to play. Yeah. I do want to actually answer a question that came up in our own playthrough quite a few times. The, the, the charge up homing attack. Do either of you know how to use it? Because I do. Yeah, you have, you have to hold down the um, is it, you have to hold down the jump button, and then the rings appear. Now, it's not even just holding down the jump button though. Every charge up ring appears as you as you walk toward the target. So you have <laughs> to spend a couple. You have to spend like a couple seconds edging your way toward the target. Hopefully, without walking your face into them. And uh, the charge up ring will appear. If the charge up ring doesn't appear, it means one hit is all you need. It's. I, d I don't have a problem per se with them doing some kind of like you can build up Sonic's attack. I have a problem with it working on bosses. Because it make it makes them no more difficult than badniks. Yeah, it's like you can you can do six hits worth of damage in two hits, and six hits is all you need for a boss, which is I think the traditional amount of hits you need to defeat a boss in a Sonic game. It's I think it's six eight. Or I think eight. eight is normally Something eight. Yeah, eight. There, yeah. And uh, you know that that means you can beat each that that means you can beat most of the bosses in two hits, three hits if not. So. <laughs> Everything ends so goddamn fast, and that's a shame because that boss music is awesome. <laughs> the Deadly Six theme is one of my favorite. Anytime you got a bad guy theme with a banjo in it, I'm all for it. I think the more time passes and the more I can disassociate myself from my meh feelings of the gameplay, the more I actually really enjoy this game's soundtrack. Yeah. Because mm. I remember even back in June when we originally did the um, commentary for this game, I felt kind of mm, about it, but. The more I listen to it, the more I actually really, really like it. Yeah, it's got some good, good tracks in it. Some of it might take some time to grow on you, but it's, but it's mostly pretty good. I, I just want to ask, how the fuck was Cubot drinking that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it should have like sprayed all over his little spindly chest too, because half the water spout was below his chin. <laughs> it's the power of Mountain Dew. He's, re he's redeeming all those game codes to get power ups in game. <laughs> That's one thing I will say. Um, Orbot and Cube, I think you know, two fan favorites. Apparently, the um, writers for this game, Ken Pontak and Warren Graff, talked about how Sega didn't want to like bring Orbot and Cube back, but they fought for their inclusion. And I'm very grateful for that because I love Orbot and Cube. <laughs> uh, you know, Orbot and Cube appeared in Sonic Boom too. It, it makes me oh, wonder. The car too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it makes me wonder uh, if Orbot and Cubot popularity is strictly a Western thing. Mm. Maybe. Well, it's weird because, like, um, when it, well, this level's boring. I mean, it looks never, interesting, yeah. but it's the most yep. boring level in the game, gameplay-wise. Well, uh, to from me, what I've to played. me, this is to me this is the most boring level in the game, gameplay-wise and music-wise, which is weird because the guy who did this. It was the um, I believe the, the sound director for um, Sonic CD, the one who did all, all of the classic remixes for the classic levels and generations. Yeah, he did half of Sonic CD's soundtrack, basically. Like, Stardust Speedway was his. Yeah, Stardust Speedway. And, like, it's just... Why is this so boring? I think... I don't think this is one of the most boring levels in the game. I think this is one of the most boring levels in the entire series. It's just, <laughs> like, this is just a Donkey Kong level grid flattened out. I've said it before, but... It's weird, because, like, uh, the stuff in the background look like... like Sweet Mountain, which is obviously this is trying, you know, this is trying to, trying to go for Sweet Mountain vibe. Like the, the giant cakes and food in the background had a certain logic to them. Like you know, like it, it was it was part of the structure of the land that they had these giant foods in, in the background. Yeah. This 
is just it this is just like a bad acid trip. Like why are there flying donuts for? Like it doesn't make I mean obviously you know it's, it's a it's, we're playing a game, we're playing a game with a cartoon blue hedgehog who runs fast. I get the fact that none of this makes any sense. Yeah. But these like rotating yeah. donuts are just stupid. Gareth, you just said acid trip and you just made me realize what this level is. This is like Zalmom's like dreamscape. We're actually <laughs> inside of Zalmom right now. We're in his mind. Ah. Uh. That makes sense. <laughs> oh god, there's so many dash panels. So many dash panels. I do like the truffles, but uh yeah. that that's kind of a nice little thing. Although Chris, this can't be Zomom's dreamscape because there's no subway sandwiches. <laughs> Good point. He he hasn't had it yet. Like he, he... He has. He has a bunch, though. Over the course of this game, he's like, I don't. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if in Japan Sega is sponsored by Subway, but like since unleashed, there's like a common theme of giant Subway sandwiches in, this, in these games. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I get I get the sense that that uh, Sega West has had a bit more influence on Sonic games of late because you keep getting jokes like the chili dog thing, which was which is like. I don't think ever appeared, and no, you can't get it from below. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. You, you, you it, the chili dog thing was like strictly American comics, American cartoons. Uh, maybe it was in Fleetway too. I'm not really sure. Once or twice, once or twice they referenced you. Although you say that, um, the first instance ever in 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 having to do with the games that referenced that was on the Japanese website for Sonic Advance Three. Huh. It did list chili dogs as his favorite food. Interesting. I think I think the first game to feature them was I think in Unleashed you could buy them. Yeah. Um, and then of course um, Black Knight and Generations has you know has him eating them, and then um, Boom has them reference. Although like, you say in that West, you know, um, Sega West has been getting kind of a more like um, active part. I think after Boom, Japan may rethink that strategy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Uh, the uh, the other thing though is that uh you know uh, the um the chili dog stuff didn't actually appear in game or you know was was advanced two after uh, Sonic Adventure two. Yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh the um the thing about that is uh, at around the time Adventure two came out, Sega was very clearly trying to unite the Western and Eastern versions of canon. Most prominently with Eggman's name. Well, I'd say I, I'd say um, Sonic Adventure started that first. Well, Adventure wasn't. <laughs> I really... love. Sorry, I love that. He smacks him with the giant sandwich. <laughs> Adventure wasn't really trying to unite the canon because I, I don't think the name Robotnik appeared in the Japanese version at all. I think that's right. Yeah. No, it it, it did. It, it never appeared. But I like the fact that I would say. SA1 start that because they try to they try to merge them without contradicting any of them. Well, so like... at that point they were they tried to merge the Japanese with the uh, with the Western stuff, purely because it was the era of the internet and there was no hiding that kind of thing anymore. Which you know what's weird and you know uh, apparently at um, summer of Sonic 2011 they had Yuji Naka. And there was there was a fan Q and A where he was asked about what he felt about like you know the Western Mobius stuff. And apparently he was just like, what now? <laughs> what are you talking about? Apparently, like, which I kind of find that slightly hard to believe that in 20 years he'd never once been told that, like, the West had this different, like, backstory and shit for Sonic. But apparently he had absolutely no idea that we had, like, Mobius and Robotnik and all of that. Because I think I've heard stories where someone high up in Sonic Team was visiting America and they heard about all these concepts and saw the American cartoons and stuff and got pissed off. But maybe that's <laughs> just one of those rumors that was go around. Well, you know, I could I could understand being pissed off at underground because that was. <laughs> it's a, uh, it, you know, it's a case of you know they don't like uh, all these creative liberties being taken with their stuff, which you know I understand and all, but you know alternate I, continuities I, you know, let it happen. I I get that, but then they go and make Sonic X, which like, you know, practice what you preach. You know, Sonic like, X <laughs> is like fanfiction.net in in uh, <laughs> form. Uh, Sonic Sonic X is, is is the reason why, and this is so boring about the thumping doo, 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 music to watch this footage. But Sonic X is the reason why everyone views Shadow as just like un like unbeatable god because he was never that powerful really in the games. But in X, like he's he's insanely like overpowered. Yeah, well, maybe s didn't the inhibitor rings make their debut in Sonic X before they appeared in the in, in Sonic 06? 
well, well hmm. technically, he, technically, they're always part of his model. But yeah, X was the first time where, like, if um, they had became to a mechanic. Off, well, yeah, it was essentially yeah, like when he takes them off, somehow he gets insanely overpowered. Which I think, I think is a is a nice concept, and, and I wonder. If that was part, if that was like when Shadow was designed, they had that in mind, or if X was just like, hey, this would be cool if this happened. Probably the latter. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it does provide at least some explanation for why he suddenly keeled over and died at the end of Adventure 2. Uh, can I just take a break from this tangent to mention that I absolutely hate the red rings in this section? This is why. Exactly yeah. this. You're not going to go back for those, but I went back for them. Like, 16 fucking times in one sitting. <sighs> This auto scrolling section is is is, a, is the auto scrolling section from hell when you're going after the red rings. Well, that's because Lewis, you are, you are a kleptomaniac when it comes to collecting stuff <laughs> like this in games. I'm willing to forgive some weird like design decisions in Sonic games, but floating capsules in the air for only this level in a section that's already boring and pissing me off. It just rubs me the wrong way. I like the fact that. This tornado, it's very considerate. It slows down when we slow down, and it speeds up when we do. Like, it, it, it's being fair. It's that a tornado, tornado is carrying a heart. Aww. <laughs> Does anyone else find it a bit upsetting that, Zom that Zomom just swallowed that bone? That's going to mess up his digestion system. That's not very smart. Yeah. I think his digestive system is just a black hole, honestly. Ah, so he's <laughs> so he's, he's gluttony from Full Metal Alchemist. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Any craps wisps, apparently. That's, that's good to know. Something that bothers me about this, in Sonic Colors, you can use the drill to hurt bosses, but if you somehow catch up to Zomon, which I've done, you lose rings. What? Yeah, that's, what the hell? That's dumb. Yeah. I mean, I get that it's a different game, and there's some different mechanics, but my natural instinct after hours and hours of colors is I need to hit this guy with the drill. I, I, st I, I still don't like the fact that wisps were included. Because it's, it's, it's pointless, it, it's, for story reasons, it makes absolutely zero sense, and to me, it kind of, it, to a certain extent, it cheapens colors, because, like, that was a really great gimmick for colors, the wisp power-ups, and the fact that they're in this game, it's just like, well, you know, that, that, that sucks. And I know that Izuka was talked about, he was, they're thinking of making wisps like, you know, like the uh, Sonic gimmicks, yeah. you know, the Sonic power-ups they use. Well, you know, if they had, if they had like, taken the opportunity to explain that the Lost Hex was connected to the Wisp planet somehow, maybe ex give some backstory mm. to the Zeddy that was connected to that, I, I, I don't know, make them the SAX to the goddamn Metroids that are the Wisps, I don't know, <laughs> just, just do something with it. <laughs> but they don't do anything with it, it's just sort of here. And this is the cutscene that they released at Boom, and this this is probably the best cutscene in the game. I, yeah, I get why they showed us this as <laughs> the other year. I like that this whistling is, sound that makes the flies away. <laughs> this <laughs> is like the only cutscene where there's actual movement and like action. Yeah, everything it's, 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 else is just like a sitcom or something, which, which I don't bad, I don't mind it because the the character interactions are fine. I, I like I like the comedy. I like the fact that we see different sides of different characters. But like, yeah, as, as Chris said, literally every other cutscene, with the exception of the opening CGI one, is just characters standing around talking. Which is fine, but once you notice it, it just well, kind of sticks out. It, it sticks out because we're used to seeing a lot of action scenes in games. But on the other hand, a lot of people complain that most of those action scenes should be playable. It's like it, it, it's it, it's a comment that you hear uh, uh, very often in relation to games like Bayonetta and Devil May Cry, and I don't 100% agree with that. Uh, it's it's just especially glaring when you have a big long action scene at the very beginning of one of those games. It's weird because in it, it it's kind of the opposite because like Sonic is a lot less effective in this cutscene than he would be in gameplay. <laughs> if, th if this was a game, you could just you could just home and attack chain all of those bad things in like four seconds. <laughs> all right, let's get ready for Eggman's best running animation ever. I love this <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Look at him. Oh man. He's doing like he's doing like some kind of crazy Nazi run. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> Keeping up with Sonic as usual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're at the end of the desert level already. Oh, oh man. So Lewis, just to quickly sum up, um, so you, you never finished Lost World, so would the so would you rank this as one of your lesser? 
Sonic Turtles. Uh, I played it through to World 3, uh, end of World 3, getting all of the red rings along the way, which was kind of what killed my interest in the game, the red rings. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't rank it as one of my lesser Sonic games. Those That, that, that particular category is filled with uh, Shadow 06 uh, and uh, Secret Rings. <laughs> um, I agree with 06 and Secret Rings. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you know, it, it's it's I you know, this is one of those weird games where I can appreciate what quality it has, but at the same time I can't really sit down and enjoy playing it myself. It's yeah, I can't say it's a bad game looking at it objectively. It's a good game, but I don't have much fun with it. That's pretty I, much I, it. I I would say it's it's I would look at it more of it's an average game. Like it's well built. I'll give it that. Like it's not really glitchy or buggy. And again, after coming back to this after boom that makes me appreciate it more <laughs> at the fact that it's it's kind of weird how like that like there was a point where sonic team was just well known for just like crappily made games but since unleashed they've they've pre been pretty good about releasing tight games i mean you, you can you can question and, and uh disagree with their terms of the quality or the fun of their games but like yeah they're not. They, you can't really say they're bad made. Maybe yeah. badly designed. They're know? technically competent these days. Mm. Exactly. You know. Um, um, so since we're I, already running over, can I just point out something before I lose it in my head? Go for it, Lewis. You mentioned the red rings. I was thinking about it. The fact that you have all your abilities from the start. I don't think there's any red ring you can theoretically not get your first playthrough. Like, yeah. I can understand missing some, but you're not locked away from getting red rings or. The three red rings at the end of Sky Sanctuary Classics path, and you have to replay <laughs> yeah, the stage. So. I definitely appreciate that, but at the same time, yeah. the rings have a way of being positioned in ways that will probably kill you three <laughs> or four times before you actually get them. Yeah, I would imagine. Nice, I would imagine Sega does that. I mean, like, that was a big part of college, where they kind of they kind of um, expect you to play through levels multiple times. Yeah. So I guess it, it's kind of like it's um, it's an incentive, which I don't I don't mind that. I prefer something like that where it's optional as opposed to, say, Unleashed, where you have to replay levels to get, like, medals and shit. Yeah, yeah, that was... Uh... You guys want to wrap I, I this think, up? Yeah, I think, I think, I think Lewis' side there <laughs> says it all. So, uh, Lewis, thank you so much for joining us. And is there anything you'd like to plug at this point? Uh, no, 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 no shameless plugs for me. Not yet, anyway. Anyone watching this already knows Brain Scratch Com, so, you know. Well, maybe Lewis has a solo project. Chris, you figured out? You well, insensitive jerk? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, Lewis, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on part three. Thank you. Bye.